Hello, welcome to this episode of the Book Fix Podcast, where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Chelly. And I'm your host, Yehida. And um, what is the happy- tea for the day? <laughs> what is our tea for the day? I love that we've started just talking about tea at the beginning of our episodes. I was, about- Who are we? I was gonna wish you a happy Thursday, but way to get no. right into it. No, 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 no. Fuck that. <laughs> what is the tea? Oh, wait, sorry. I just made a mistake. Chelly and I are going to try to censor each other, okay? F that. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, w- while you were talking, I was mid-prayer, but I guess I could tell you the tea for today. <laughs> because I know we... You know what? I want my coin back. Like, you know, what? money doesn't grow out of trees. Ah, uh, you know, and- unfortunately, it does it. I really thought that it did. I know. I've, I've been looking at my tree. Now I feel like I don't even fucking need a tree. But... <laughs> <laughs> apparently people have found a way to cheat the system i don't know if you've heard but oh, there was apparently a person who went to a local bookstore mm. and tried returning 800 dollars worth of books wait it was a local bookstore it wasn't a barnes and noble no local <gasps> local that's like if oh. someone went to our local bookstore you know the one that we go to <gasps> yes oh my god that would be so embarrassing also if if they 800 that Dude, wait, do the math. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm just going to guess that these 800 books each oh gosh, cost. Wait. What do you think? What do you think is like the flat rate of a book? Just for you guys to know, um, Yahira is doing this mental 16, math. She's just so good. 16,000? I think that's four. Wait, hold on. Hold on. How did you get that number? 26 books. <laughs> I can't believe he returned four million books. <laughs> <laughs> no you said 800 no yeah 800 dollars worth of books oh i thought you yeah, said i thought you said i literally thought you said okay so anyway if it was, that's still a lot if though. it was a local bookstore <laughs> and let's say each of them were 15 dollars that's uh. being generous because most are a little more than that. It's like almost 53 books. And that's Damn. embarrassing. That that's is embarrassing. so embarrassing. You know, I mean, listen, if you really, really needed to return books, okay, fine. But like, you don't have to dump all 800 in one sitting. Because the poor person who was the cashier was probably looking at you like, why the fuck did you buy these in the first place? There's like two things that give me the ick about this. What? It's... um. Well, first off, the fact that they went to a local bookstore because yes, those I agree. are barely running. Like yeah. it's it's really the love of books that keeps those going. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm thinking about our local one. It's really small. So the fact yeah, that dude, you know, everything is so cramped in there. Yeah, and eight hundred dollars, that would really hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, this mm-hmm. one could have been a bigger one, but still I, yeah. I don't know. Well, it it just feels. I feel like this is one of those like unwritten rules, right? Like, do you really yes. need to return all of these? Like, I, you can because you know you're a consumer and you have every right to return these things you buy if you don't want them anymore. But should you really? Should you? And it's like not not talking about financial need because if there is financial need, I one thousand percent understand why you would return them. But this one didn't feel like it was for financial need. Like, this one just felt like, hey, I want my money back. So then it comes to, like, the point where how many, what's the amount of time that is appropriate to still go and turn in a book? What do you mean? Like, Like how long can you hold on to a book before you're, like, not allowed to turn it in for money? Um, I think normally it's about a month, no? Three weeks? You think so? Okay, but okay, okay. I want you to put yourself in you're a, a book store owner, okay? okay. Just you're oh that God. role, okay? Love this. You've been here, here. you've been I here love for role-playing. 17, 17 years. You oh, wow. you live and breathe these books. You love it. And mm, then you see mm. me and you're like, Oh my god, I, I used to do a podcast with her. Okay, no. Oh, wait, oh my god, I like wait, that. I don't like, I don't like this that. scenario. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm I uncomfy. still do a podcast with her. There comes Chelly. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, if I returned a book that I bought from that bookstore and it was disgusting, like it was oh my God. written in, I cried in it, I you can tell oh. I prayed in it, 
<laughs> oh yeah, 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 and that definitely leaves a mark. Mm-hmm. Do you still um, give them money back? Because in I local, think... sometimes they give you credit, right? I th- yes, yes, because I mean they do accept donations, but you don't really get money back for that. You just get credit. I think that. I mean, in in retail stores, they don't take things back if it's obviously used. So I think the same should go for bookstores. I feel like if it's obviously used, then why would they accept it? And when I mean it, when I say accept it, I mean, why would they pay you back the full amount that you paid if it's obviously used? Yeah. And I, I, you know, know, I keep thinking about our local bookstore because I do know that they do accept books like to Mm -hmm. give to them. And I don't know about you, but if I ever gave books to that bookstore, I'm not doing it um, expecting a really big amount back. You no, know? yeah, same. I'm just trying to help out. Yeah. And then sometimes I don't want to hold on to a book or I want someone else to hold on to it. Like even well, with us, because we do we do buy physical books. Mm-hmm. But you and I are very much like, oh, my gosh, I took notes on it. Let's go leave it in a little library so that yeah. someone else can read it. Yeah. And hopefully like our notes and. Maybe if we didn't like the books, maybe someone else will enjoy it. But that yep. is something and that I, I like, but I don't expect to actually make money out of uh, out of them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if I did one day go to the local bookstore and they were like, hey, you turned in, what, six books? Here's like a $5 credit. I'd be like, oh, fucking hell yeah. <laughs> like, that's amazing. Yeah. That, I would, but, that would make yeah. me really excited, too. Um, also... We didn't mention it, but shout out to Amivi. I think it's Amivi Reads on TikTok. Yes. Made this whole list of all of the things that have been going on in book talk world. And this was one of them. I don't know what number it was, but this was one of them. So she made a list. Yeah. Um, But enough about book tea because um, this is round two. I think this is round enough to officially fight Scarlet. Mm. (laughs) Scarlet St. Clair's week, dude. Unofficially, but officially. (laughs) Imagine it's her birthday. (laughs) I know. Imagine we talk about her and she like feels us and she's like, oh, my gosh, there's a presence. (laughs) They're talking and it's about not me. a good one. It's it. not a good one. It's those book girls again. Ugh, they're at it again. God <laughs> damn it. Yeah. So last last time, last time, last time. Hello. What day is it today? Thursday. So on mm-hmm. Tuesday, we talked about King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. And today we're going to be talking about the sequel, Queen of Myth and Monsters. When but, did this book come out? Um, I think it was sometime in December. Because I, don't know. I, I made remember a, you. You know, I made a re- TikTok about it, and you know, exactly. I just thought you would remember <laughs> the date I do, on that TikTok. I don't, I don't remember the day, but I remember you wow. talking about having to read. I think it was Realm Breaker, and you're like, "How do I do that if I have to reread the first book of this?" And <laughs> no, I it's because I, I had wanted to read Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard, but then unexpectedly, I received Queen of Myth and Monsters earlier. And then I realized, oh, shit, I have to reread King of Battle and Blood because I I just can't go into the sequel without rereading the first one. That's crazy. Yeah, of course. That's monstrous. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it just came out not too long ago. Dang, dude. But we are going to be talking about this book. Um, I don't know if you prepared a summary. I did. (laughs) Oh, my God. Thank God. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. So I do recommend for you to check out our Tuesday episode. That way you kind of are familiar with the world, with the characters. Um, So I'm going to give a brief summary. And afterwards, we're going to spoil everything. Okay. Okay. So Queen of Myth and Monsters is a continuation of King of Battle and Blood, where Isolde and Adrian have an arranged marriage because Adrian is conquering all of the kingdoms of Cordoba. But when he gets to Kingdom of Lar, he says, you know what? I'll leave you guys alone if I can marry Isolde. And then it happens. And so Isolde is now the queen of Rebecca, which is the vampire kingdom. And this book is pretty much her attempt to find her place as the Blood King's queen. But their relationship is put to the test when their priorities don't align, as well as more is revealed as to why the goddess Diced turned Adrian into the Blood King. Dang. That was a good summary. Oh my god, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. 
I always look forward to hear your thoughts of whether or not you like my summaries. <laughs> and if well, you say, like, if you don't say anything at all, I'm like, you know what? I know. Right. Then you hang You're up. right. Let me do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just. That was a rough draft. <laughs> like Yahira said, um, we don't spoil in this summary, but we are going to spoil mm. for the rest of the episode. Yeah. So we do recommend that you go read this first so it makes more sense. But and, if you are into. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. What would we say this is? If you're dark into romance? arranged marriage, dark romance, dark romance fantasy, if you're into mm-hmm. vampires, uh, smut heavy books, then we would definitely recommend this duology. Yes. But it, there's going to be more than two. <laughs> okay, so I want to guess how you feel about this book. Okay. And I... I'm trying to be better about that thing we talked about where mm. sometimes when we guess what the other person is feeling, we accidentally reveal how Project. we're feeling. <laughs> you yeah. do that very and often. I don't mean to, but I think you did I that for Hellbent. Exactly. Did you notice that I'm you did sorry. that for Hellbent? I did. <laughs> I did notice. I listened back to that episode and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> I'm not going to keep you secrets. But I, I thought about this one. I put mm. my two brain cells to the test and rubbed them and together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that you like this book because mm. you like Adrian and Isolde. I don't think you liked everything in this book. And I, I, I specifically remember a conversation we had when mm. you were 16 and I was 15. This is how, how real this is. I think it was 15. It was either that or 16 and 17. You were 16 and 16, me. you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that one special week. <laughs> that special week we're the same age and I disrespect you. <laughs> it's like a running yeah. on joke because yeah, Yahira is older than me. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Just keep going. Okay. Anyway, anyway. It's anyway. a joke between us. Do you know what I'm talking like where I'm going? No, towards? I don't. We'll keep going. I'm very lost right now. <laughs> when we were younger. Scarred. When we Mm -hmm. were younger, you once told me that you read a story and that you loved it. And you were so torn because you you loved it so much. And you told me about it. And I was like, well, it sounds good. And you were like, yeah, but there was this point where they had built up their relationship. And then all of a sudden, one of the characters slapped the other character. And you hated it so much. (laughs) And like the fact that you complained about it to me, like said a lot. Mm. about how much you hated that and yeah. that happens yeah, in this yeah, book yeah. more than once yeah, and i do twice. understand that it's a Who's dark counting? romance because i mean <laughs> i do mm. understand that it's a dark romance because i mean in battle and blood she literally stabbed this fucking guy twice too but there's something but different slap? about it, it hurts. being a slap <laughs> So no, there's more something... personal <laughs> exactly and i know that about you so you know, I, I don't know how you remember this because i barely remember that story do you remember what dude, story i, I was can tell talking you more about? about it later dude oh, yes okay, okay. i do i do you do but okay. <laughs> anyway i'm very interested. i know that oh, okay <laughs> i know that about, about you so i mm. i know that your heart wants to give it a five but because <laughs> of how you feel about that i'm gonna say <sighs> this is hard can I make two guesses? No, no. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, do okay. the average. Then I'm just gonna <laughs> average I'm, it. No, out. I'm just gonna go with my heart. Because of that slap, I don't think you'll give this book higher than a two. Mm, okay. That's my guess. And I'm okay. so confident. I'm so confident. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did my research. Oh. Do you see my two brain cells? Oh, love it. You you really did oh, that. <laughs> I, I don't know how you remember that to be honest. Um <laughs> Me neither. I forget everything. I know. That's what I was going to say, but I didn't want to roast you. I was going to say you have the memory of a goldfish, but me too, though. (laughs) Wait, of a what? No, just kidding. I'm kidding. kidding. I remember that. (laughs) Okay. Um, um, My guess for you is that I think you preferred the first book. I think you enjoyed it overall. I mean, you gave it like, what, a three or something? Mm -hmm. So overall, you were kind of vibing with it. Um, when the slap happened, I did think about you because I've mentioned it before. Yeah. Sometimes things happen and I'm like, yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna mark this. This little thing right here is gonna be tabbed mm. right here. Um, I don't think that you enjoyed where the story was going overall though. I don't know if you still care about the couple though. I'm gonna guess that maybe you do a little bit, but I don't think you cared for like the plot 
like where it was because it, it, it expanded a little bit more and i don't know if you really liked it um i think you would give this book a one dang what a change what a change. <laughs> well you gave the oh. other one a three so it's not that much of a difference but, I mean, why don't we just get into it? I don't think we have to talk much about the characters, but because we did in our first episode. Which you on should our Tuesday episode. check it out. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Amazon Music. Music. And actually, before we continue, uh, it would be amazing if you guys could give us five stars. It yeah. definitely helps out. I think that we have kind of skyrocketed a little bit more. Well, compared to how we were before. <laughs> so yeah. It definitely means a lot to us if you could do that and then leave us a review if you like. And let us know if you like this book. Yeah. And if you're listening to us on YouTube, if you can leave a like, comment and subscribe, comment how you feel if you have read the first book. If you've read this book, do you agree with us with the hesitation of mm, mm. that slap? The apprehension. So apprehension. Oh, my God. Oh. Get you someone that completes your sentences correctly. Okay. <laughs> it's the same. It's literally just. It, never mind. I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> Thank you. I, I told you I only had two brain cells. I already put them to the test. That's as much as I could do. You're today. like, I'm done for the day, guys. That's it. I'm checked out. <laughs> so when this story starts, um, we already have a solid relationship with Adrian and Isolde. But mm -hmm. the death of Isolde's father is still really, really fresh. Yeah. And she's kind of in like a weird point because they're trying to rule these these um places, right? They're trying to rule all the houses or at least like make ties with them. But she's yeah, but in that, like a weird that doesn't that doesn't really happen in this book though, because this book is definitely more focused on catching who it was that betrayed Adrian and revealed that Isolde is his weakness. So he's trying to catch two different people. And yes. Isolde is trying to get past what happened with her dad, but also be the queen that she wants to be for Laura, but she's doing it for Rebecca. So yes, I don't know if we mentioned it in the first book, but Ravenna is here. She's back. She's fucking shit up. And she's making this like crimson mist, which pretty much kills people. And then there's a whole bunch of monsters like roaming around and shit. And so uh, Adrian tells Isolde like don't put yourself in danger because obviously if she dies he dies and well j not just that but also he cares about her and yeah. shit hits the fan he's not there he's looking for these traitors and she wants to be you know a good queen so she fights alongside her people which is great but then she ends up getting bit by an off hawker which was described to yeah. be like a demon dog mm-hmm and unexpectedly, I I didn't expect that she would fucking turn into a monster herself. Dude, it's funny because I I read the book that Yahira annotated. So <laughs> as soon as that bite happened, you and mm -hmm. I thought the same thing where it was like, oh, this is fucking happening fast. Like I yeah. didn't think like I did expect that she would turn, I thought, to a vampire. Yeah, so same. the fact that she she turned to this monster first kind of threw mm -hmm. me off. Yeah. And I kind of hated it because in the first book, I mean, okay, it didn't it literally lasted until almost the end where her perception kind of shifts a little bit. But I thought that she would have kind of gotten over that whole prejudice of, "Oh, I hate monsters." I don't want to be a monster. And so she's obviously freaking out when she realizes that she's turning into this monster. And I just think she's kind of mean to Adrian. I feel like Adrian was trying to play it off like, oh, look at you. You're so cute. Like, whatever, you know. But she was obviously angry. Yeah. And then the, the amount of times that they fought in this book was so unnecessary. Like, it drove me insane. It felt okay, like they were fighting every other chapter. Can I just say that mm. this fight was one of the first fights in the book? Mm -hmm. And I did think that this fight was a little bit justified only only because she was panicking. Like, I yeah. don't agree with what she said, but I think like when it came to that point, everything that she was like ingrained into believing kind of just surfaced. So the yeah. fact that she was like, I'm a monster. You don't get it. I'm a monster. And it was fucked up. 
And I do like how he handled it. Like, you know, maybe he could have been there for her more. But I mean, to him, it wasn't that big of a deal. Because so. he's literally a monster. Yeah. I feel like he doesn't realize that it actually bothers her at the moment. Obviously, later on, mm-hmm. he'll be like, oh, shit, it, it really mattered to her. But in the moment, he's like trying to play it off like, you know, it's OK. It's all right. I still love you. You're still pretty. Um but the the reason why it bothered me was because Isolde has this knack for saying things that she knows is going to cut really deep. Because oh, she yeah. tells him, oh, so you failed then. And he was like, well, you're still alive, aren't you? And she's like, yeah, but not the way. Because he had told her that he would take care of her and protect her. And that part pissed me off because it's like, I mean, Isolde, you were the one who ran to the fucking danger. So, yep. Why are you so angry with him? And he mm-hmm. wasn't even he wasn't even there, so it's not like he could have protected you if he wanted to. And I think this was the fight too where I don't know if it was in this one or the other one, but she would always be like, "You know what? I don't want to fucking touch you. I don't want you to touch me. Get out of my fucking face." Yeah. That's how their fights would end. And honestly, every fight that ended like that made it feel like they broke up. So I was always <laughs> kind of like, "Uh, are, are you guys still married?" Thing? Are you guys still married? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So it's very different from the first book because I never imagined. Well, I mean, there's a reason behind everything, but I never imagined Adrian to be like fighting with her so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then it, it does bring up in the book like it was a quick marriage and they're starting to get to know each other now. Mm-hmm. So, of course, they're going to have disagreements, but my God, it's so much. Yeah, it definitely piles up. Mm-hmm. Um, But then also they're fighting because she wants to take care of the kingdom of Lara because obviously now her dad is dead. So they don't have, you know, a king or a, king or a queen or anything. And so she wants to go over there and present herself, I guess, of, as their queen. But Adrian can't leave Rebecca because of the Crimson Mist and all of these monsters and him trying to find the um, the the traitors. And he doesn't want her to leave because, you know, their lives are tied together. Yeah. And so that also prompts a fight. And I understand that she wants to be a good leader. But at times I feel like she doesn't really or I should say she always assumes the worst in him. So she'll yeah. immediately say, oh, it's because you don't care about my people. And it's like, no, that's not why. It's because I literally can't leave right now. Like We can leave it was kind another of, day. It was kind of the same with um, because she wants to rule the kingdom of Rebecca, of Lara, and also of the third place that belongs to her mom. Yeah. And um, there is a situation where it was like, have you even talked to that kingdom? Have you told them anything? Have you looked into it? And he hadn't. But it was like, bitch, there's like 5,000 different things that's happening right now. Yeah. You can't expect him (laughs) to go into this. mm -hmm. Yeah, to make some time for them. Yeah. So I really, I really disliked the fact that um, he sent someone the next day. Oh. But it was sad because he did it for her. And she even started crying because, you know, all of the pent up emotions. So she was like, oh, my God, babe. And he was like, you know, I'd do anything for you, babe. But of course, this person <sighs> fucking died. I mean, sorry, no more cursing. This person effing died. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's like we're going to try to censor ourselves, but not really. <laughs> this, person, this is person effing dead as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, okay, but to backtrack a little bit, Mm, um, Adrian, Adrian did bring up that because he didn't want her to go alone to the kingdom of Lara, it was like, why don't you just send Killian? Because Killian is Killian is still fucking here. I was like, Killian is still mm, here. (laughs) It's still here. Fuck. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) But dude, didn't it throw you off? Because Killian seemed like a whole different person. He completely changed. His character changed. He was a fucking asshole in the first book. And now he was super sweet, super nice, super loyal. He was like, Queen, I'll do anything for you. And everybody in Rebecca loved him because he was so helpful. And I was like, this is not the same man. This is not the same person I was introduced to in the first book. I kind of would have liked it if it had gotten to that point a little bit in the first book, or at least if they had sprinkled in 
mm-hmm. they did have a friendship because it mm-hmm. felt so different here. Like it felt I like mean, he was he, a different person. But he did kind of help at the end of the first book, but I just don't think it was enough or no, it wasn't not strong enough anyway. It didn't really make an impact on me. And so. the fact that she was so quickly to forgive because it felt like he had done something horrible to her. In the Mm -hmm. first book that was just like never spoken about. And I'll be very honest with you. This book does start with a trigger warning. And it did say that it was going to include R word. And I was so like. I I thought that it was going to be between Killian and Isolde. Like I thought that's where it was headed. So I was Mm -hmm. worried because Mm -hmm. I thought he was getting too comfy. And I'm Mm -hmm. glad that never happened. But even now it, i i don't know i get weirded out by killian because i don't know if i'm supposed to like him or not he still gives me the ick like i feel like on the third book he's gonna be a whole different person again dude but killian he had a romance in this book it was very short-lived but yeah he did <laughs> yeah literally but <laughs> i <laughs> i feel so bad about that one though because i liked her a lot so did i she was so cute and you want to explain what happened? She didn't even want to be a part of it. Well, we're kind of going off the rails because we're still talking about Isolde's character. Oh, I um, I just want to say that with Isolde, I was a little bit worried that she was going to be turned into a vampire like near the beginning of the story because she does mention it when she goes out and, you know, tries to help everyone before she gets bitten by the off hawker or whatever, the demon dog. Um, There's a moment where she says, oh, I'm just so weak. Like, you know what? If I was a vampire, like I could save everyone. I could be a better queen. And she had multiple moments where she was thinking that. And I I just thought that maybe that would be her reasoning, which I don't think is a bad reasoning. I mean, it's better than, babe, I want to live with you forever. So like, just bite yeah. me right here, right here. Um, but I just felt like <laughs> wow, she wasn't ready. coming because- for Twilight like that. Uh, what? <laughs> I didn't say nothing. <laughs> but um, I just felt like the... The reason behind it was understandable, but I just knew that she wasn't ready, especially because they were always freaking fighting. Um, but see. when she did turn, it was super anticlimactic. It really was. I didn't. I was like, is she even a vampire? Is she a vampire? I know, because mm-hmm. it kind of just happened, and then the next day happened, and she's like, babe, let's go eat fucking tacos. Well, not really, but it like felt very, <laughs> There's no like, tacos here. Okay. <laughs> That that's a thing now, and she even went up to Killian and was like, "I can turn you." It's like, wait, you he's turn. like, she's what? like, You're a- yeah, yeah, because it's not yeah. even. It's like not, mm, yeah, it's like <laughs> not even obvious that she's a vampire. Like, what's the difference here? She's just like, what is it? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I hate it. Like, I I didn't think anything had happened. It, I kind of forgot that she was a vampire, to be honest. Same. Um. <sighs> But, so, like I said, Ravenna, she's back. She's back better than ever. Love that for her. And um, she has the Book of Dice, which yes. uh, contains a whole bunch of crazy-ass spells that Isolde actually created in her past life when she was Yesenia. And uh, she's worried that she's going to pretty much try to kill Adrian or what. I don't, I don't even know. Like, what is... What exactly is the conflict here? But so she wants yeah. to kill Ravenna, but she can't because Isolde doesn't really have magic. So she's trying to invoke her magic once again in this lifetime. And so it's her, it's Anna, which is Adrian's cousin, and they need a third person. Why? Because all good things come in threes, I guess. And so yeah. they ask Violetta, which is her like maid, and yeah. they try to do this like binding spell. And, okay, so much happens. There's a lot of plot in this book. It all goes wrong. (laughs) It all hits the fan. And Violetta ends up dying, RIP. And Isolde kind of, she kind of goes through another villain arc. Like, she goes a little feral. Like, it it really hurts her that she lost Violetta. And she's almost losing Anna as well. Because Anna is, like, in a coma, comatose state. Like, she's not really waking up. I didn't really understand this part. Because how much time passed? What do you mean? Like this entire thing? Because I remember Anna wasn't responding. Mm-hmm. And he, she was calling out to her, right? Yes, she was. I th- I think the moment, that moment of when they were getting into the water and they were trying to 
make this spell or whatever was very confusing, but I think it was supposed to be confusing to not really understand what happened. So the villagers or like some villagers pretty much came and tried to kill them because there's this other guy who showed up in Rebecca whose name is Sol- Solaris. And yes. he is the same as Adrian where he was um, morphed by the goddess Dice. But mm-hmm. she but she gave him the power of killing witches and remember Isolde was a powerful witch and so it causes tension between her and Adrian because everyone immediately trusts this guy and so he's like staying around hanging around and she's just like no like like just it's just like a bad omen for her because of who she was before yeah but um can I ask for like a clarification thing? Sure. When that spell didn't work, was mm-hmm. Anna R worded? So she went back in time. Like she she saw herself in her past life when she was Yesenia. And um they were oh, talking so, about wait, King Isolde King, saw this? Is yeah, it was in Isolde's um head that she's okay. she was hearing Anna. She was hearing Anna. But she went back into a, a memory of her past life. And in this memory, um, King Dragos, which was the king of Rebecca, so before Adrian, who he mm-hmm. was like a tyrant, he had like a he had a lot of women in his like dungeon where people can come and do as they fucking pleased, I guess. And Anna would try to save these girls and she got caught and she revealed to Yesenia at the time, Isolde now, that when he caught her, he pretty much had, he like pretty much abused her and he had like all of the guys there take advantage of her and it was like really, really sad. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. what I misunder or uh, that I didn't understand. I sometimes got confused when they would do like those flashbacks because I just mm-hmm. felt like everyone was calling Isolde Yesenia. Yeah. So- <laughs> I feel like that's the only indicator of when you knew that, oh, we're in the past now. Yeah, yeah, I kind of wish that the flashbacks would have been done better. Uh, and mm-hmm. also those moments of when she would go into haze and then she would have those flashbacks. I, I don't know. Like, it was a little bit confusing. You know what else kind of threw me off? What? I We had mentioned in our Tuesday episode about the first book that mm-hmm. I would drop this book if it was going to be another Kikio Kagome situation. Oh, like, my God, I was, yes. <laughs> we did I talk about Inuyasha. Mm-hmm. I was not down for that. And you even wrote it in the book. You were like, is this going to be Kikyo and Kagome? Like, is there going to be two of them? Yeah, I'm glad. Because, that- so the High Coven was killed by Dragos and Ravenna. And the High Coven yeah. was just the most powerful witches. And Yesenia was a part of them. And so Adrian, he like buried them in like a special place, like of where they used to live. I don't know. Or just be. And her ashes get stolen. So, I mean, technically, we could see a Kagome and Kikyo in the next book because we don't know what happened with her ashes. Yeah, I guess. But I don't want it. You, but want it, it kind of throws me off because I can't imagine that happening because of how often um, Isolde is like, you know, me, Yesenia, back then. And it's like you're... You don't talk about it as if you're two separate people. She did at one point, but then sometimes uh-huh. she just talks about it like, oh, these are my memories. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. <sighs> she did call Adrian out once, though, and was like, do you love me or do you love her? Choose, bitch. But yeah. It's like, how do I how do I get to choose? The other you is dead. <laughs> yeah. Or is I, she? Uh, hmm. Maybe she's not because (laughs) so it was revealed that they wanted to use the ashes or her bones or whatever to try to create like a weapon against Adrian. So there is a weapon in, you know, in the making. We don't know what it is. I feel like it will be Yesenia, honestly. Um, So, yeah. Do you feel like there's going to be conflict between who he loves if she comes back? Oh my god! Oh my I don't god! Want I don't I, want this. That, that sounds bad. <laughs> this sounds confusing because it's like, babe, wait! I love both of you. Let's turn into polyamory. 
<laughs> oh my god <laughs> this is disgusting <laughs> which one are you yesenia or yesenia 2.0 <laughs> so just yesenia then i guess <laughs> no i i would be really really upset if that's what this book turns into because i don't want that at all yeah me neither and i mean how do i say this i i don't think that's where it's going because like mm-hmm. I said, they they connect Isolde and Yesenia's memories as if it's her own. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to accept that fact, even if I don't like it. Okay, that is what it is. Mm-hmm. There was another part that confused me. What? Because there's a part where Isolde is having like aches, I think. And is it Anna who asks her if she's carrying a child? Yeah, so that was in the past. But that's as Yesenia. That, okay. That's as Yesenia. So Yesenia and Adrian were expecting a baby, but she never told Adrian. Adrian doesn't know. That's so but sad. He sold it, but he sold it was the one um, who wanted to tell him, right? Like it was a memory of Yesenia's, but he sold it was the one who wanted to go out and tell Adrian. Was it? Mm, mm, I don't know. <laughs> what? I don't know. Because then she would have told him. She didn't tell him, though. I don't... Uh, yeah. Well, no, they didn't. Because then the story kind of <laughs> it was started going really fast after that point. I don't yeah, remember there was what no happened time. next. Because I remember that happened and she was devastated. And then... Oh! And then the traitor appeared, right? Was it around this time? Who? The traitor. There was my two. Boy. My boy. My boy, Oh, Soren. that one. Oh, I thought you were talking about the other one. Okay, this one yeah, her th- that was near the end though but yeah uh, so she gets betrayed <laughs> she gets fucking yeah. betrayed by none other than soren who we were rooting for in the first one um they get they actually do get close to each other though they do have a connection together and he even tells her like if you if you remembered you know your your life as yesenia then you would understand why adrian needs to die because he's being taken over by the goddess of dice and and it, it's kind of out of nowhere in my opinion but so adrian was fine in the first book but in the second book it's like because he was uh, transformed into a vampire by the goddess she has yeah. more um, like she has oh, what's the word she has more influence on him than what was expected or revealed i guess um and so Soren tells he sold it. I mean, you see his eyes, you see the that his eyes are changing, you know that he's losing control, he's not being a good king to us, he's forgetting, you know, what matters, and so he tries to kill Isolde, or he kind of does because he leaves her for dead. Mm-hmm. And then he just leaves. Honestly, for me, it wasn't that much of a shock. That it was Soren that betrayed her. But yeah, it still kind of hurt. It still kind of hurt. It, I think what made it hurt more was the fact that he felt bad. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he was crying. And it, it sucks too because you can tell that everything he had said to her before wasn't just like a ruse to try to get close to her. It was genuine because he even mm-hmm. had like moments of vulnerability where he talked about his relationship with his partner derek mm. is that his name uh-huh da- da- and yeah and i i like those points because he would just talk to her like a friend he would be like you know i think my guy likes your guy don't make it weird. oh i know he was be- he was <laughs> feeling really insecure and he was like i think Darok is in love with adrian and she was like what no no. No. <laughs> they no. look at them and you know it's like Adrian He's... practicing like sword swinging and Derek is like behind them like no you hold it like this. And she's like no. <laughs> no, they couldn't possibly be in love with each other. He's helping. <laughs> um Ugh. yeah. But I that... I like those moments because you got to see the type of friendship that they had and how close they were. So it hurt when he betrayed her. But I understood where he was coming from because Mm -hmm. it was like a lose battle, like a lose lose battle. Mm -hmm. So um, it I felt really bad. So did I. 
And I what just, about the? But oh, wait, but he's not the only one who betrayed yeah. her, though, because in their conversation when he was stabbing her or he stabbed her, she was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, so it was you who told Ravenna that about the bloodletting about." are their lives being linked together so if Isolde dies then Adrian dies and he was like no I that wasn't me so it's like wait bitch who there's another one (laughs) mid sword in her chest and she's excuse me I can't die yet you gotta tell me (laughs) you got we gotta figure this out right now Uh, and who was the second traitor (sighs) fucking Anna I fucking I fucking can't it was Anna because she stole she stole um the book, right? She had the book, no? Yeah, or she, she did. She, she, I think she, I think she memorized the spells, and she was the one who created the Crimson Mist. But she was yes. like, "Well, actually, it was you, Queen. You were the one who created it. I just released it." Yep. But um, yeah, everyone's so anti Adrian. So, you know what I love? It's not though? the there vibe. Was, not the vibe. Not the vibe. Not I'm the here vibe. for. Mm-mm. I really liked there was this one point I think it was with um his BFF maybe his lover Derek oh my god (laughs) I just want to say I do I did really like their moments together though like I felt like they were actually forming a genuine friendship no I I did too but I did want to mention that there was this one point where he was talking to Adrian Mm -hmm. and uh he was like okay what's the next move because you know we're we got to reach our goal and then Adrian's like oh what's our goal it's like isn't it to rule the houses like isn't that our goal and adrian's like damn we've been in this battle for so long i forgot i forgot (laughs) that that was the point and that really speaks on like how often things go wrong and even like his talk with isolde when he was like yeah everyone in the world is going to betray us we really only have each other that fucking Mm -hmm. sucks that does suck yeah because when they realized that it was soaring he was like I mean, am I shocked? Not really. <laughs> I felt bad for Derek. <laughs> I okay. I am very conflicted because when Soren was having, you know, showing his vulnerability to Isolde, he did reveal that the way that he was turned into a vampire was very like uh, it just was very uncomfortable because. Derek pretty much like forced it on him. Yeah. And he was like, I, I never really wanted this. So it kind of feels like, do they really love each other or are they just like used to one another? I, and that was the question that was asked by Isolde because she was like, I know that you love him, but are you in love with him? That's mm-hmm. the question you should ask yourself. And I don't think Soren is, but I do think Derek is. But then you're right. It could be out of guilt. I think so. he feels guilty because even when Soren leaves and Derek feels like super guilty about everything, he's telling Adrian like, don't worry, boss. Oh, get rid of him. I should have gotten rid of him. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> while, while him and Adrian are sharing one milkshake with two straws. It's like, babe, I mean, king. <laughs> he's just like, please, babe. I mean, Adrian. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go rest. I won't kill him. See you later, babe. I mean, Kay, I mean, uh, I mean. Oh, oh, <laughs> God, what, what do I call you? <laughs> Have you seen that TikTok where it's like these two guys saying bye to each other, and it's like, wait, okay, bye, dude, bye, man, see you later, and they kiss on the lips. And they were like, um, did we just fucking kiss? <laughs> this is their oh, vibe. So Thank you. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, that. A lot it happens in this book. It's kind of crazy because it's very smut heavy, but there's a lot of plot. Yeah, there is. Dude, I'll be very honest with you because of I I was really into the plot. I don't mm. really remember the smut much because I was I mean, I had 2 days to read this book. So I was yeah. kind of going Your through it and anytime working. Anytime overtime. the smut came on, <laughs> I was just like, "Okay, I could skim forward. I don't have to read the whole thing." But what? How yeah, dare I didn't, you? <laughs> I didn't really read. Well, I read one of them and I was like, wow, slight. But like the rest, <laughs> the rest I could live without. <laughs> uh-huh. But um, this kind of leads us to the end of the story. Yeah, I feel like we didn't really touch on Adrian's character much, but. Well, can I just say, mm. still love that man. And I feel really bad for him because he knew that he was turning 
because of the book of Dees. Dees? Is it Dees? Dice? I call her Dice, but it could be Dees. I don't know. Okay, well, the book of Dice. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate that he didn't want to hurt anyone, but it hurt me when he was like, if I try to hurt you, you have to kill me. And she was oh, like, no. you can't make me kill you because then I have to live with the fact that I murdered you. But he doesn't want to live with the fact that she... He, he could accidentally kill her because there are moments where he's not even himself anymore. It's um, the goddess Dice who like, <sighs> completely takes over him. And it sucks because that conversation c- kind of just ends with both of them frustrated because it's like there's nothing they could do wh- where one of them wins. Mm-hmm. You know, they're both kind of fucked. And it was really sad that moment where he got really jealous of Killian and he he kind of lost control and he ended up accidentally like, like, well, he made out with her, but then he accidentally bit her and she just kind of looked at him like, what the fuck? And then you can tell that he just felt so guilty and so yeah. surprised by his own actions. And that was, he had hurt her again another time. And mm-hmm. you can tell that it had affected him because he was like, no, I can't keep hurting you. Like, I don't want this. Yeah. Ugh, it sucked. I did really feel for him. I felt like he, he he has so much responsibility and so many unloyal freaking people. <laughs> uh, so, this, oh. These bitches. <laughs> Just Who made this kingdom? Him. <laughs> um, yeah, but I also really like that he never pretended to be a good guy and even from the very beginning he it's very obvious that he's just fueled by like bloodlust pretty much and the need for revenge for what happened mm-hmm. in the past 200 years ago um but yeah no i still i still like his character overall i just feel I bad for him, him. I, oh, it's love. funny because love is a very no i <laughs> mm. i do i i really like his character i can't say i feel the same for isolde it's not that Mm. i dislike her character but i just i was more frustrated with her mostly because of the fights because it felt like it they were all kind of fueled by her yeah yeah (laughs) i feel like everything she says is so mean like so hurtful and i mean i kind of understand that in the first book she is painted to be super like quick-witted mm-hmm but yeah, this one just felt rude. This one felt kind of like <laughs> bullying. <laughs> oh, and then when she slapped him, did we even, did we even talk about that? Oh my god, how did we, we didn't we even talk about. It? We were oh fucking my god. fifty minutes later. We didn't even mention it. <laughs> we got to no. put like a little a little um, disclaimer at the beginning. Like, go to fifty minutes to finally talk about what we talked about at the first minute. Of no, this you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to listen to all of this to get to this part. Dude, I almost fucking <sighs> forgot. I fucking hated that. Same. What a, thank you. Oh my god. I, if you had been it, if you had let that slide. Ugh. It literally took me out of the story for a second. I, I had to knew pause because I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Like what just yeah. happened? I don't even remember why she slapped him. Was it because of Solaris? I don't remember. Either way, yes, not justified, girl. Not justified. What the hell? Because I feel like she's always <sighs> just assumed the worst in adrian and of adrian so she just makes the i don't know like she answers her own questions because she doesn't want to just communicate she doesn't want to tell him hey i don't like that you're keeping this witch killer in our kingdom after what happened you know two Mm -hmm. centuries ago and i i'm not saying that that's not valid but i hated the fact that she hit him because even he was like what the fuck (laughs) yeah and the thing like I, I would have understood if I don't want to justify it because I hate it. I hate it. Mm-hmm. But it was a lot to take in because he was like one person who was oh, he's a witch hunter. Right. Solaris was. Yeah, so, Solaris. of course. And it would have been convenient because keep in mind, it's them against Ravenna as well. And so that means that he can kill Ravenna. Yes. So. I kind of understood where um, Isolde was coming from. Mm -hmm. I don't like that she slapped him, but I felt like it was a lot of emotions at once. And I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to try to keep reading. But then (laughs) the two other things happened. There was one situation where she even tells him, I hate you. Isn't it? Yeah. 
And she stabs him yeah. and slaps him. Oh, the fucking she's double fucking hit. St- because she felt like the slap wasn't enough. She even said like I d- I'm not hurting him enough, and so she like digs her hand into his chest. I think I'm pretty sure that's that what happens. Is the worst. She stabbed thing. him with her, like her own hand, pretty much. I fucking hated that. And honestly, because he turned and he left, he didn't. Oh no, no, no. She left, but he didn't go after her. And then they had not seen each other for a while. And then their way of forgiving each other was just kind of like looking at the stars, I think. They they did something that was supposed to be yeah. like, oh, it's cute. Oh, that I fucking, I would have been okay if he had just fucking left. Like, it should have been her that apologized, not him. I, I don't know. get why he would think he would have to. Mm-hmm. But it's weird because I felt like, I don't know. I felt like the character of Isolde didn't really match anymore because no. she got really, really angry in this moment. Okay. So she slapped him. Okay. Okay. Uh, just, I hated that moment a lot. But then later on, when Adrian started to change, I don't know, because she didn't know what was happening at first. And I felt like her anger didn't make sense anymore. Like, because she wasn't really angry. That when he was slowly changing into whatever the goddess was doing to him. And so I was like, okay, you're going to be pissed about this, but you're not pissed about that. I'm very confused. Like, it, she didn't feel like the same character sometimes. And I'm not saying yeah. that I wanted her to stab him, but I like still, like, I was like, okay, you're you're one way one second and then the next day you're like no babe oh i remember why it was because she told him i'll be like you know i'm here with you till the end like you know what i mean it's like yep. no matter what you and i end game and it's like bitch Dude, what it was so end game? you just slapped him like five chapters ago Dude, it was, it was toxic. toxic i hated it, toxic, it. Yeah. and not the good <sighs> toxic by britney spears the bad toxic i know <laughs> <laughs> the bad toxic anything not by britney spears <laughs> i i couldn't stand their relationship in this one and i hated it because i still was kind of holding on to the relationship they had formed in the first book mm-hmm. and i mean those moments would shine in this book but I, I couldn't it didn't excuse the fact that she did that twice and the fact mm-hmm. that when it happened the second time he physically had to stop her from slapping him I yeah. hate that. Like, that's kind of uh, triggering, actually, that they would do it like that. Yeah, it actually really pissed me off. And it also pissed me off that he was the one who always had to apologize to her. It's like, what the fuck is... What is oh, this? What is this that, love story? He, he would apologize often. And it, another triggering thing is the fact that he... I don't even remember the context. And honestly, maybe the context in this one was justified. But because he apologized so often, she had once told him... Don't apologize with your words. If you're apologizing a lot, reflect and change how you fucking act. And it's like, mm. shut the fuck up. Adrian <laughs> works day and night. Okay, <laughs> that <laughs> bitch yeah, doesn't yeah. fucking sleep. Okay, hey, he has not best slept in a Derek. Stay up all night. <laughs> There's slumber parties. Okay, he works. <laughs> I swear he does. <laughs> oh. No, they're just you know they're just conspiring together. That's all. Nothing. Nothing I weird. Can't- Dude, I can't wait for the third book where Derek and um, Adrian accidentally kiss and it changes. Because <laughs> like, that's where this is fucking leading up. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine that? That'd be kind of crazy. Dude, I, I hope I manifested it because I can't stand both of them right now. I just don't see where the fuck this story is going because the way that it ended was, was so abrupt yeah, that I couldn't dude. even believe that it ended. I was like, what Wait, the fuck happened? Dude, that's why I texted you. I was around the end and I didn't even notice when I had texted you. I told you, okay, I'm going to be done in an hour when I told mm-hmm. you we were going to film. And I finished it like 30 minutes early and I was like, what the fuck? Like, how did yeah. it? How mm-hmm. am I at the acknowledgments? What the fuck happened? <sighs> I don't even understand what happened at the end. Can you can you explain it to me? So... Pretty much, Isolde realizes that Anna was the one who was behind everything. And they have a conversation and Anna tells her, no, Isolde, you have to realize that the reason that you made this book was to stop Adrian. Like, that's why you made it. And so, you, me, and Ravenna (laughs) till the end. And even Ravenna tells her, because Ravenna reveals herself in, like, mirrors. And so, she tells Isolde, like, no, you have to realize that you don't remember 
what happened or I don't even I'm gonna be honest I feel like this reveal was so confusing to me so what they're trying to do is they're trying to flip Isolde into working alongside with Ravenna instead of trying to take her down but if she works alongside Ravenna then that means that they're gonna have to kill Adrian and they're trying to tell her that she made this book to kill him but it's I don't know like I feel like it's just confusing I just I mean I was just gonna say like by the end of the book she smashes the mirrors again because she's done that before in the first book and yeah. then she's like freaking the fuck out and then she sees Adrian right and I think they like hug each other or something yeah I I was so confused and that's kind like, of where it ends right yeah like that's pretty much it and then I think Anna I don't even know what happens with Anna because I don't even think she actually saw her I think it was like her dream state I don't yes, even know it was I'm her so dream confused. state because she wasn't there but yeah. I, does that mean that Yesenia didn't love Adrian? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so confused. Because it kind of felt like that, right? I think that's what they were trying to hint at. But I don't know if they're just trying to manipulate her. Because she doesn't, like, she has some of her memories back, but she doesn't remember everything. Yeah. I I don't know. And I think I that the most the moments that she does remember with Adrian, they're always really like cute, romantic, like full of love. So I'm, I don't know what is happening. Like, what is the story? Where is the story going? Mm -hmm. If, if she was trying to kill Adrian and it also doesn't really make sense that she wanted to kill Adrian in the past life because he wasn't even a vampire yet. He was just some basic soldier, basic bitch. You can say it. Yeah. A basic (laughs) bitch. And when he was a soldier, he was trying to take down, dragos who was trying to kill the witches so i'm i don't i don't understand yeah i don't understand i don't get anything (laughs) period okay so we are reading the third book right (laughs) oh i don't know well i guess it kind of depends yeah it kind of depends on both of our overall thoughts Um, i feel like you should should go first because no i feel like you should start because i have a lot to say okay well what if i have a lot to say you don't (laughs) (laughs) you're right Okay, so <laughs> I see. I, I fucking know you. <laughs> I um, I'm a little disappointed. Mm. Uh, okay, I'm gonna change that. I'm a lot disappointed. A lot. Oh, a lot. Okay. A lot. Mm. Disappointed. A lot. Please don't say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very disappointed in this book because this is not what I expected at all after reading that first book. Like I did expect a continuation after the king's death, and I was kind of expecting a like kind of like a revolt with Lara, which it kind of hinted that that was going to happen because mm. people would have just thought that Adrian killed the king. Yeah, That's what I was expecting. And I just wanted to see a book where like the houses kind of came together um, because they worked on bringing them together. That's what I just the king and queen freaking against the world. <laughs> That's all I fucking wanted. So <laughs> all those fucking Yesenia flashbacks but they're not because I'm her like I was not there for that shit I mm-hmm. I was there for Isolde when she would act as a queen and help I fucking love that shit but that didn't really continue much <laughs> like she uh would train honest uh, she would train with Soren but I feel like that didn't really lead anywhere not really no because she was um, trying to control um, her turning into the the demon dog. The, yeah, but I don't know. It didn't seem like anything. Um, I still really like Adrian, but I don't think I like him enough to continue this series. Mm. Because I, I just, I don't know. I don't like where this is leading. But I am curious to see how it would end. Because of, I mean, all the shit show that was this <laughs> book. Like, I don't even know where the next one would begin. Um, one thing I did like, which we didn't mention, Ooh, is um, we didn't talk about likes. <laughs> is um the the houses were named after women, so like Lara, Rebecca, and I mean I I noticed that in the first book. I didn't mm-hmm. think much of it, yeah. and honestly, it probably doesn't mean shit either. But Nadia, did we talk about Nadia? Dude, no, we didn't talk about Nadia, but it's fine. You, <laughs> can, you can just say it now. Okay, well, uh, Nadia was fucking in on it, I guess. I don't know. She basically said that, you know, men always fuck shit up. So we have to kill all these men. 
and she was the one in charge of all these people dying and um i kind of hated that reveal because it felt like it was built out of nothing so yeah it, it, and then like, she tried to kill isolde just yeah. like her father love that oh my god dude it, it suck. i don't know it's just i feel like that would have been more impactful but i didn't give a fuck about nadia to be honest and everything in this book felt anticlimactic mm-hmm. and i am disappointed in it again i think yeah. i would give this book because i did enjoy reading it still i would give this book like a 2.5 out of 5 what what yeah. i thought the slap would have for sure given it a one no, it was, it was, don't get me wrong. It was bad, but <laughs> I I don't know. The writing is still really pretty though. Mostly the yeah. way Adrian speaks to Isolde. Mostly he, just Adrian. He's so, he speaks so beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah, yeah It's okay. I'll make it. 2.5 out of 5. Wow. Add a clapping track. Go. That's me snapping. <laughs> um, one clap. <laughs> <laughs> Just one tiny one. Um, okay. I have a lot to say. We didn't really talk about likes much. I felt like we were just kind of ranting the whole time. Mm-hmm. But I do want to start off by saying that I feel like the plot of the story overall is really, really good. I, I like like the ingredients of everything. So I love that it's a story that's fueled by revenge. And I like that there's two different goddesses. One that's the goddess of life. One that's the goddess of the spirit. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I like that one of them gave life, but also death to Adrian by turning him into a vampire and just made him into this like bloodthirsty thing. But I feel like the story kind of lost itself. And I, and I really don't want to come for Scarlet St. Clair, but it was a little obvious that she didn't really know where the story was going and she revealed it in her acknowledgments that she didn't really know where the story was going it was a little obvious because there was no indication in the first book that adrian was still being controlled by the goddess of dice because if you remember in the first book when he's telling isolde everything you know how he was turned into a vampire how they knew each other like that moment of you know when they're he's letting her in she asks him like oh so then you're you're doing this because of the goddess right and he's like no because he doesn't he doesn't really believe in the goddesses or doesn't really follow them and he tells her no like i'm not like i she doesn't control me like i'm not doing it for her but he is though like this Mm -hmm. whole revenge plan is because of the goddess of dice and if if he was lying to Isolde, then that should have been revealed in this book because it was in his point of view. And that was never touched on. Like, I just felt like there was so much happening in a way where it was just confusing. What I would have really yeah. liked was if the first book started with, it doesn't have to be a prologue. It could have been the, it could, you know how some books are broken up into different parts like maybe yeah. the first book could have been part one and the part one could have been that moment of, you know, 200 years ago of what happened with Yesenia and Adrian, because when they come back to each other, oh, well, and him turning into a vampire, because when they come back to each other 200 years later, then we would actually have like, we would actually care like, oh, wow, it's that girl that you loved 200 years ago. And I really want to see where this is going. And mm. her not her not really wanting to fall in love with him, but him being patient with her. And I wish that it would have been obvious in the first book that she, that the goddess was controlling him because they mentioned it as like, oh, you can see like a white rim around his eyes that was kind of like glowing. Yeah. And it would have been cool if that was just maybe sprinkled in the first book. And I think that they they tried to kind of bypass that by saying like, oh, well, he was her favorite. And now that he's kind of doing his own thing, that's why she's controlling him. But I don't know. Like, I feel like that that wasn't strong enough for me. I wish that it, it would have been more obvious in the first one that he's doing all of this. Yes, to get revenge for his old it, but also because this is what the goddess wants like she wants revenge for i don't know i think she just wants to be entertained honestly yeah and 
there's still some things that I'm not entirely sure about. And I don't know if it's because maybe I wasn't paying enough attention, but I just, I know that the goddesses don't have power in the, in their world. That's why they have these like vessels. That's why, yeah. you know, Adrian's there. And that's why the goddess Asha is like trying to, con- trying to form her own vessel or maybe she has already, but I just, I feel like there's still some things that I don't really understand. Like how were the other monsters created then? Like, where did yeah, they come from? Like, I don't know. Were they just like a result of the the red sky? Because now there's a permanent red sky over the kingdom of Re- Rebecca because of, mm-hmm. you know, that night of when he was turned into a vampire. And I mean, I have other questions, too, but I feel like overall, there's just some things that I wish were just explained a little bit more. And I already said it before, but I just wish that he's old his character. <laughs> was a little bit better in this book. Hate that she slapped him. Honestly, it just pissed me off so much. And you mm-hmm. know how much I love the first book. So when I was I reading so when I was reading this book, I was like, why the fuck are they fighting again? It pissed me off so much. And I also didn't like that moment where they're having like hate sex or like they're like reconciling through sex. Oh my god, I think I know what you're going to talk and- about. And she's like, is this how it's always going to be? <gasps> Dude, and he was I was like, just going to bring that up. And he Can was I read like, the quote? What? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> she says, is this how it will always be? What do you mean? I asked. She pressed her head into the pillow, allowing me access to her neck. We always fight and fuck. What the fuck? I mean, okay, if you like hate sex and or whatever this is, what is this? What is this? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever this is, if you like that, then go ahead and read it. But it pissed me off. I, I think it pissed me off because it happened so often. Um, mm-hmm. But overall, I'm just disappointed. I'm still down to read the next book to see if maybe these questions are answered. But I think yeah. I would give it a two. Damn. Oh, my God. I'm a little shocked, to be honest. Yeah, girl. I knew, I knew you hated I the know. slap thing. I knew it. I I I swear to God, Scarlet Scar, can I call you that? If you're listening to this, <laughs> I hate please, it. Wait, what's her full name again? Scarlet Saint Clair. Claire, can I call S- you that? Oh. S squared C. Can I call you that? Dude, I please don't turn yeah. this into Kikyo X Kagome. Thank you. Please don't. I love you, Nyasha, too, but don't do it. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> What? I feel like I don't know. I read these books. Um, what's the word? Like right next to each other, like back to back. Back to back. I read these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read these books back to back. So I feel like I have lived many lives recently. You have. You really have more than more than Adrian, which was two hundred years young. I know, young. Thank you. Oh my! God. I thought you were gonna make a mistake there. No, 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 um, no. He's very. So young. I really hope. I really hope Adrian and Derek end up together in the third book. Thank you. <sighs> No, I don't, but I just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just wish No, that... I want to see it. <laughs> I hope that the romance is better the next book. I'll probably read it. You know what this it. romance be kind real. of reminded me of? Don't. And you can, and you don't. can hang up on me. Don't do it. I know exactly who you're going to say. <laughs> Get me. I'm muting you. <laughs> do you remember Harden? Shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, you can't tell me it doesn't though. Get the fu- get out. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> We're not supposed to say the word fuck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> get out. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I love that. Oh my god. We should keep dude. doing that. That's funny. <laughs> I know we're okay. never gonna be non-explicit. You know, never. But you know what I hate? You know what I hate? What? Is that they what? also cross my fucking mind? Sorry, is that they also cross my mind? <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> like, it, it pissed me off that I was also thinking like, oh my god, is this after two point Dude, it is felt this... like it. Don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Adrian is still more lovable than than Harden. Okay, please, please. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> no, please. Depends on the cry. third book. I will fucking cry right now. <laughs> you know how I feel about after. I know you. I I know you love it. I mean, yeah, you bought sure. the last book and left it at my house. Well, because I knew how much you wanted it. So you're welcome. <laughs> I know. Fuck. Okay. 
Sorry, I just had to throw that one in there. Um, Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much for everyone who is listening to us on podcast form, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get your podcasts on. Thank you so much. If you can um, leave a rating of five stars and a review, that helps so much. That would mean the world to us, too, if you could do that, because I feel like it definitely helps us out to be more recommended to other people. Yes. And if you can also um, tell your friends, your family, hated ones, loved ones about us, that actually helps a lot because the best type of exposure is through word of mouth. Um, If you are watching us on YouTube, we are currently just audio form, no video until Yahira and I meet once again. (laughs) One day. day. Yeah, one day. But we uh, really appreciate it if you are, if you can please like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be caught up with our videos. Um, We usually end these episodes by reading a review of the book Mm -hmm. and we read the review based on a dice roll. So if it lands on an odd number, we read a negative review. If it lands on an even number, we read a positive review, but we cannot say anything about the review. So after... After it's read, we just leave it like that. And um, Yahira has... It. We just leave mm-hmm. it in the air. Yahira has a digital dice. So whenever you're ready, I have the reviews open. Okay. We got a five. That is uh, an odd number. And we are going to read a negative <laughs> review. Okay, give me a sec. Okay. Okay, this review is from Molly on Goodreads who gave it a one star and she says, trash, honestly. The author's note at the end mentioned she didn't know where the story was going, which showed in my opinion. I was so over Isolde whining at every opportunity and it only solidified my thoughts that besides a good sex life, she and Adrian didn't have a solid foundation to stand on in their relationship. I'm all for an overprotective male lead with touch her and you die vibes but also the impulsiveness at some of the things that adrian did felt like they created more problems than solved them granted the people he did kill were dicks but still that by the time it came for the giant reveal of who betrayed them i was like yeah makes sense there were only three people to choose from at this point i also got the barnes and noble special content first edition and the graphic novel in the back made me sad like no hate for the artist but seeing the adrian isolde characters made me not want to root for them my initial thoughts was these are characters i'm supposed to be imagining in multiple sex scenes super upset i finished the book i almost dnf'd it multiple times but i figured most of her books i read for the vibes but this killed the series for me thank you so much for listening and we will see you on tuesday Bye. Bye. Do you feel it? Yeah. I feel free. Yeah, that too. But I was going to say it's almost time for us to be reunited. Dude. Oh my God. I'm so excited to see you. I know it's been so long. Do you even remember what I look like? I mean, honestly, I'm, I feel like you're not going to remember me. You're going to end up at someone else's house. (laughs) Your neighbors. (laughs) I know you're gonna do the podcast with them. Uh, I hope they're funny. <laughs> Wait, are you saying I'm not funny? Wait, no, that's why I'm. That's why I'm saying it because you're hilarious. They Come don't on. say fuck like I do. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't get the joke. It would be funny. You'd be with them, and you'd be like, "Yeah, let's have a good fucking time." I'm sorry, a good time. Fuck. And then my neighbor would be like, "Why are you?" They'd here? be like, <laughs> "Who even are you?" <laughs> <laughs>